Ta -da! Hi, and welcome to the Only Nugs channel, where we talk about games, art, comics, and on rare occasion, my travel blog. I'm Ali, and today we're taking a closer look at Spire's End Hildegard, a board game for one to two players. You may have heard of Spire's End, which is the original Spire's End game with spookier vibes. Hildegard is a standalone version created by Greg Fabro and illustrated by Diego Frias and Cy Gardner that is much cozier and lighthearted, intended for a chill time for a single player or cooperative duo. The premise of the story is, you're Hildegard and you've been tasked with delivering a mysterious package. What first captured my attention about this game was simply the art on the box, so much so that I borrowed this game right from my boyfriend's living room and brought it back to my home to play it on my own. At the time of my making of this video, I've played through the game three times and also lost three times. For how cute and charismatic the artwork looks, the game isn't easy. The easiest part of the game is the setup. All you have to do to start the game is take the chapter one deck and place it at the center of your tabletop. Then pull out your shot dice, which are these red ones, your wild shot dice, which are the colorful ones, and your marker cubes which are used to keep track of various things like money, number of bullseyes, marksmanship, and fish bait. Then read the cards and choose your own adventure. The game length varies depending on how far you make it. In my first game, I made it to chapter three before having an unlucky roll that resulted in me ending and losing the game. That took about two hours or so, mostly because I was spending a lot of time referencing the instructions. Game 2 took about 15 minutes. I made some decisions that ended the game prematurely in Chapter 1. It was embarrassing even though there was no one around to witness it. And Game 3, my longest game took what felt well over 2 hours, maybe even 3. I tragically ended in that one, but I did make it fairly far in Chapter 4. For all three games, I picked different decisions and had completely different storylines and outcomes. Admittedly, I found the endings that I pulled a bit abrupt and somewhat unsatisfying, which is why I found myself stubbornly going back for a second and third game. What I enjoyed the most with the game was easily the artwork, but I also really liked the straightforward dice mechanics of rolling for bullseyes and bullseye parts. Comic book artist Diego Frias combines thick, chunky, and detailed line work with simple color palettes to create characters and items that feel playful. And concept artist Cy Gardner designed beautiful pen and ink style landscapes that feel warm and inviting. Both art styles fit right in with the varying storylines, which mostly starts off charming and silly, but gets more intense as the story goes on. Now, things I didn't quite enjoy as much was my desire for clarification of rules. The rulebook is okay and details out scenarios you might face and how to deal, but for how often I was resorting to the rulebook in my first playthrough, the easy setup felt a bit misleading. This of course improved by my third game, by which I felt confident I had a decent hold on gameplay and rules. I think when people play analog games, it's important to give yourself grace on any first playthrough. We're not machines, and there's no system that's going to error or scold you for either accidentally making the game way harder or easier than it actually is. Which, by the way, I was playing with handicaps in the early part of my first game because I didn't realize small things like black and white half bullseyes count as a bullseye together if the opponent card denotes both parts and not upgrading my wild shot dice when I caught a fish that opened up a nude wild dice to me. I was playing with the black wild shot die for pretty much the entire first game. If you're someone who's looking for a single player board game with charismatic art style and lighthearted humor to pass one to two hours, Spires and Hildegard might be a good contender. The mechanics are straightforward and simple and you can't beat the ease of game setup. As for me, would I try to go back and play the game a fourth time? Maybe as a co-op game with two players, but probably not on my own again, at least for some time. If you enjoy this video, you can check out 
the only next channel for more board games, art, and graphic novel content, or subscribe to catch future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ta-da!